The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 449 Tooth No Party. The kitchen periodically banged with noise as Valet complained and Maynaf insulted, and both did something actually approaching work. Maple watched, spent on protest, and Starlight watched with her, eating the cookies no one else seemed to want. From anger to denial to could be worse acceptance, they went back and forth in what almost resembled a dance, the only souls to seem to have an interest in that kitchen. For all of Valet's worrying, Jam Charles didn't show up either, apparently having better things to do with herself than stalk her companions for cheap laughs. Their racket echoed around corners and down into air ducts beneath the floorboards, reverberating inside basement-level maintenance rooms and then the tunnels below those. A wall-side water pipe and an unlit, cramped corridor carried a clang as Valet's knife struck something metallic, and that was as far as the noise pierced. The pipes and tunnels, however, kept going. Several stories further, linked by magical light conduits, air ducts, and buried hoses of metal that snaked their way through the ground like veins, gears worked their way into the concrete earth, and those gave way to a winch supporting two golden chains. They dangled into the darkness, tinkling as they moved in a non-existent breeze, and then the switch on the wall was kicked by a little yellow hoof, and they snapped tight and began to rise. The ears and back of Jam Jars's head were silhouetted by her horn, the room's only light source, as she faced a rising imprisonment ring. Soon, it clunked into position. Hmm, you're back, Puddles chuckled, forelimbs held spread eagled and an interested grin on her face. I was placing bets with myself down there on how long it would take one of you to get ticked off or curious enough to come take a swing at me. Go figure it's the quiet one. My name is Jam Jars, Jam Jars coolly replied. Speaking of quiet, what happened to you? No more laughing like an insecure child? Eh, it's not really my style. Puddles tossed her pink and chartreuse mane. To be more specific, I have no style. I just gets the biggest reaction out of Marina the moron since she thinks I'm disrespecting her precious baby daughter's little pony body. It also makes for a hoard conversationalist, and truth be told... I like company. She put on a crocodile grin even jam jars couldn't match and continued. So I'm willing to concede a little for that. You though. What are you doing down here? Did you come alone? Her eyes widened and narrowed at the same time in greedy glee. Didn't your mommy teach you not to trust strangers? Aren't you worried I'll prey on your doubts and weaknesses and turn you against your friends? Jamja scoffed, holding her stance perfectly and tossing her own short mane. My mother was a coward who lived her whole life in a hole and did the same thing over and over. I have to do my own work to learn about the world and that's why I'm here. You know, things that I want to know too. Oh. Buttles looked intrigued. I hear a bit of family resentment here. You're a minefield kid and the charges are right below your own hooves. Are you sure about this? Suspicious, Jam Charles narrowed her eyes. Are you trying to make me leave? Hmm. Puddles hummed to herself in vaguely sarcastic thought. Yep, I am. Truth be told, I find lone ponies horribly uninteresting. I could put in all the hard work in the world and never even get to see the results. You want to talk? Bring your friends next time and we'll be in business. Now, it was Jam Charles' turn to smirk. You seem to have misread the situation, she gloated. You're bored. I'm the one who can flip that switch and I'm the one who gets to choose whether to stay or leave. I have what you want. I'm in the position of power. Puddles' short grin returned. Power? You're talking to me about power and what I want, kid? Right now, you're talking to the most powerful Windigo in the world. I'm certainly not locked up because anyone thought I was harmless. Show me your power. Bring what you think you've got. And Jamjars gave a satisfied shrug. 
You tied up, and I'm not. If you were so powerful, why don't you escape? She paced in a circle just to prove she could. I can certainly walk around more than you. Hehehe, <laughs> Puddles chuckled darkly. But I already am free. These chains are a temporary inconvenience next to what my species has endured ever since we were awoken from the void and given our prime directive on the Day of Reckoning 2,000 years ago. You see, this pony body, everyone seems so angry that I have. She glanced victoriously at her forelimbs, the only part of herself she could see. With this, I've evolved. I've become a superior life form. I can exist freely outside of our old container without suffering the consequences. Isn't that great? Gem jars stared at her in confusion, a scowl growing on her face. What? Puddles' two-tone eyes flashed with a crystalline sparkle. What? Not following along? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you were here because I know things you don't. She blew a disdainful puff of air. Try not to feel left out. It's just Wendigo politics. Surely nothing you'd be interested in. Jam jars blinked. Wendigos have politics? That was what Puddles was waiting for. Oh, you want to know? She leaned forward, straining against her bonds and smirking. Now that's funny, because I thought you were the one in a position of power here. Oh, right. You initially said I knew something you desperately wanted to know, didn't you? She leaned back, putting on an insufferably smug grin. Looks like the tables have turned, kid. I dare you to lower me back into that pit and leave. But you're too curious to bid me farewell now. See, I know I'm unpleasant, and the fact that you came down here anyway means you're the one on a mission, and I'm the one calling the shots. This is my dungeon and my game to play. Clever, Jemjoth remarked, not showing that she had been rattled. And I should probably leave. You clearly try to goad me into staying, but I'm still the one who can reach the switch, and I say I'm not done talking to you. Uh-huh. Puddles nodded unenthusiastically. Because I'd really rather you leave. You're not being nearly as interesting as I'd hoped, and I feel like brooding instead. Jamjars frowned for a moment, contemplating harder whether she was being goaded. Last night Wallace said you beat Marina and nearly him too in a fight. Wallace is the best fighter in the Griffin Empire. Puddles was probably strong, but not that strong. I want to know how you did it. Puddles' grin returned. Really? All the things you could ask someone like me, and you want to know how to beat another mortal in a fight? Your ambitions are pathetically uncultured. Why not get yourself a real goal, like becoming a goddess? Jamjar stared. Oh, you hadn't even considered that, Puddles boasted, reading Jamjar's face. I see that look in your eyes. Now you're thinking about the possibilities. She sighed in contentment, closing her eyes and taking a deep breath. Where do you think our Shiva came from? Think she existed from the dawn of time? It could be possible. Not that a chained-up little windigo like me would be any use in getting there. Think bigger, and come back when you got a goal higher up than your own shrimpy ears. Mm, sorry, Jamjar decided. Not interested. Really, it is, because I'm all out of mysterious words and tantalizing tidbits to tease you with I'm not contractually forbidden from uttering. Really? Jamjar blinked, then put her own smirk back on. Contractually forbidden, are you? What happened to bragging about how free you were? Well, aren't you a sharp one, Puddles hissed. This one's more of a personal code. Believe it or not, I enjoy having a world to exist in. Jam jars? To a sharp breath. The presence of world-destroying secrets got your attention? Puddles raised an eyebrow. Such a pity you have no way to tell if I actually know something, or I'm just making stuff up to get your goat. I'll give you this one. I don't actually know any free and easy ways to destroy the world. 
Not unless I do, and have just forgotten about it. Sure hope my memory doesn't get jogged on that one. I don't want to destroy the world either, Jamjo said. You're more frustrating to talk with than I'd hoped. Oh, that's the danger of speaking with an eldritch being like me, Puddles apologized, shaking her head sadly. Especially when I already told you I'm not interested in talking. You should leave before I yank your chain so hard you try and attack me. I've already told you what I want. And I've told you what I want, Jamjars demanded, glancing toward the switch on the wall and then glaring at Puddles. So, what'll it be? Puddles sighed. Then it seems we're at an impasse. Too bad. Looks like we are, Jamjars agreed. I guess I'll just sit here until you get bored and talk to me. Will you? Puddles wait. I don't need to eat. I've sat here for more than five years. And I've sat in a hole where my family lived for more than twice that, Jamjos countered. Besides, five years is a fraction of your existence as opposed to nearly half of mine. Ha! Ha 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 ha! Puddles doubled over, chuckling. You think you can outstubborn me, do you? Want to see a show of true power? This move will blow your mind. Behold! Then, she closed her eyes and did nothing. Her head lolled, her breathing stilled, and before long, Puddles was sound asleep. Hey! Jamjoy's growled, raising her voice to no avail. But cheating! Puddles didn't wake up. Jamjoy's lasted only thirty seconds longer, glancing several times at the lever in impatience before stalking over, flicking it, and slamming the door on her way out. End of chapter 449